Hello, my name is James Hanratty. I'm a regulatory counsel in the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research. Today, I'm going to be presenting on the guidance for industry, referencing approved drug products and ANDA submissions. First, I wanted to go over the purpose and the goals of the guidance. The main goal is to help applicants submitting an abbreviated new drug application in ANDA to seek approval of a generic drug to be able to identify a reference listed drug, also known as an RLD, which is a previously approved drug product on which an applicant relies in seeking approval of a generic drug. Also to be able to identify the reference standard, and that's a previously approved drug product selected by the FDA that an applicant must use in conducting any in vivo bioequivalence testing required to support the approval of the ANDA. And finally, to be able to identify the basis of submission for an ANDA. Let's take a step back and talk about the statutory background for generic drugs. Section 505J of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, the FDNC Act, permits any person to submit to the Food and Drug Administration an ANDA to seek approval to market a generic drug. And that brings us to the cornerstone of ANDA approval. To obtain approval of a generic drug, an ANDA applicant is not required to provide independent evidence of the safety and effectiveness of the proposed generic drug. Instead, the applicant relies on FDA's finding that a previously approved drug product in other words, the RLD, is safe and effective. And the applicant must demonstrate, among other things, that the proposed generic drug is the same as the RLD in certain ways. What evidence is needed to support approval of an ANDA? Well, among other things, the applicant must generally show that its proposed generic drug has the same active ingredients, conditions of use, route of administration, dosage form, strength, and with certain permissible differences, labeling as the RLD, it must show that it's bioequivalent bio to the RLD and meets the same high standards of quality and manufacturing as new drug products approved under new drug applications. The guidance goes into depth defining and describing four important terms, listed drug, reference listed drug, reference standard, and basis of submission. It's important to understand these concepts separately, but also how they interact with each other and sometimes overlap. Let's start with listed drug. A listed drug is a new drug that has been approved under Section 505C of the FDNC Act for safety and effectiveness, or under Section 505J of the FDNC Act and which has not been withdrawn for reasons of safety or effectiveness. A drug product is deemed to be a listed drug on the date of approval and is identified in FDA's Approved Drug Products with Therapeutic Equivalence Evaluations, more commonly known as the Orange Book. The electronic Orange Book can be accessed at the link provided in the slide. We're going to move on to reference listed drugs now. A reference listed drug, or RLD, is the specific listed drug on which the ANDA applicant relies in seeking approval of its ANDA. In other words, it's the approved drug product the proposed generic drug is intending to duplicate. FDA identifies in the Orange Book listed drugs that are eligible to be RLDs. FDA's identification of listed drugs eligible to be RLDs. Because an ANDA applicant is relying on FDA's finding that the RLD is safe and effective, the RLD must be a drug product approved under Section 505C of the FDNC Act, for which FDA has made a finding of safety and effectiveness. Identification of the potential RLDs in the Orange Book. In the printed version of the Orange Book, an RLD will be identified by a plus symbol next to the drug product as you can see in the slide. In the electronic orange book, an RLD is identified in the RLD column towards the right-hand side of the screen in the slide. Choosing an RLD. An ANDA applicant must 
first choose an RLD. If the applicant has a question about which listed drug it should identify as the RLD, the applicant may submit a controlled correspondence to FDA prior to submission of its ANDA. If FDA has not designated an RLD for the drug product the ANDA applicant intends to duplicate, then the applicant may submit control correspondence to FDA asking it to designate an RLD for that drug product. And if FDA has designated an RLD for the drug product, but the potential applicant seeks to refer to a different drug product as the RLD, then the applicant may submit a control correspondence to request that FDA designate that different listed drug as an additional RLD. RLDs for petitioned ANDAs. Under the law, an ANDA applicant may submit an ANDA for a generic drug that is not the same as its RLD because, because it has one different active ingredient in a fixed combination product or has a different route of administration, dosage form, or strength than that of the RLD. To do this, the applicant must first obtain permission from the FDA under a citizen's petition. And these petitions are known as suitability petitions. The RLD for a petition ANDA must be the same as the listed drug identified in the FDA approved suitability petition. The role of an RLD in an ANDA. The RLD is the listed drug to which the ANDA applicant must show its proposed generic drug is the same with respect to active ingredients, dosage form, route of administration, strength, conditions of use, and with certain permissible exceptions, labeling. The ANDA applicant must also demonstrate that the proposed generic drug is bioequivalent to the RLD. If the applicant seeks to change its RLD, the applicant must submit a new ANDA. We're going to move on to reference standards now. If bioequivalence is not self-evident, there are a variety of methods by which bioequivalence may be demonstrated, including in vivo studies, in vitro studies, or both. A reference standard is the drug product selected by FDA that an applicant seeking approval of an ANDA must use in conducting any in vivo bioequivalence study required for approval of the ANDA. How does FDA select a reference standard? To facilitate generic drug development, FDA generally selects a single reference standard to ensure the greatest level of consistency between a generic drug and its RLD and among generic drugs. Where the RLD is marketed, it's usually going to be the product selected by FDA to serve as the reference standard. But where the RLD has been discontinued from marketing for reasons other than safety or effectiveness, FDA may select a different approved drug product to serve as the reference standard. FDA usually selects as the reference standard the highest strength available for drug products with multiple strengths. In instances in which FDA cannot select the RLD as the reference standard, and there are multiple approved generics, generic products that refer to the RLD, FDA usually selects the generic market leader based on units sold as the reference standard. In making a decision whether to select a new reference standard, FDA may consider, among other things, whether the listed drug is the reference standard is no longer marketed, whether selecting a new reference standard would help prevent a shortage of a particular drug product or category of drug products, whether or not the current reference standard is also the RLD, and the agency determines that the quantity of the current reference standard in distribution is so limited that a potential ANDA applicant is not able to obtain a sufficient quality and quantity for in vivo bioequivalence testing, even if the current reference standard has not been withdrawn for sale. It's important to remember when FDA has made a determination that an RLD has been withdrawn for reasons of safety or effectiveness, FDA will not select a new reference standard. Reference standards and the Orange Book. Prior to 2017, the column in the Orange Book labeled RLD at times indicated the drug product FDA selected as the reference standard. 
And this led to confusion about which drug is the RLD and which drug is the reference standard. FDA modified the Orange Book to clarify which drugs are RLDs and which are reference standards. In the printed version of the Orange Book, the reference standard selected by FDA for the drug product will be identified with an exclamation point symbol, as you can see on the slide. In the electronic orange book, a reference standard is identified by RS in the RS column, directly next to the RLD column we looked at before. Requesting selection of a reference standard. If there is no reference standard in the active section of the orange book for a drug product the applicant intends to duplicate, a potential applicant may submit controlled correspondence to FDA asking it to select a reference standard for that product. If there is a reference standard in the active section of the Orange Book for a drug product the applicant intends to duplicate, but there are limited or no quantities in distribution, or if a potential ANDA applicant believes a reference standard other than the one selected by the FDA is appropriate, then the potential applicant may submit a control correspondence to FDA to request it select a different listed drug as the reference standard. We're going to move on to basis for ANDA submission. Federal regulations require an ANDA contain a basis for ANDA submission, referred to as simply the basis of submission or BOS. In most inst instances, the RLD should be referred to in the ANDA as the basis of submission. The RLD should be provided as the BOS on form FDA 356H and in the appropriate sections of the ANDA, for instance, in section 1.12.11. The basis of submission for petition ANDAs. The basis of submission for a petition ANDA has three components. First, the RLD, which must be the same as the listed drug identified in the approved suitability petition. Second, there needs to be a reference to the suitability petition's FDA assigned docket number. And finally, a copy of FDA's correspondence approving the suitability petition. More detail on this aspect is provided in the guidance. And now we're going to talk about basis of submission and the reference standard. While the reference standard is not part of the basis of submission, it should be identified in the relevant sections of the ANDA that include information pertaining to bioequivalents. For example, in section 1.12.11, which provides information about the drug product, including bioequivalents, and section 2.7.1, the summary of biopharmaceutic studies and associated analytical methods. We've provided some additional resources for you. Uh, the first resource is a link to the Referencing Approved Drug Products and ANDA Submissions Guidance. We also have a link to the Electronic Orange Book. And if you need any additional assistance, we encourage you to contact CEDAR SBIA at the email listed on the slide. I wanted to thank you for your time and attention.